can see again the orbital mechanics in effect as these stars begin to dance around a binary black hole system. Nope. That got noped. This one's getting noped. Left and right. Now what are these remnants here? Discussing B discussing. 
discussing some black holes, what we know about them, some of the um, categories of black holes. Let's see, let's put one, Sagittarius, Jesus, it's four million suns. Sagittarius A is the black hole at the center of our Milky Way. So let's just go ahead and put one right here. We'll start off. Albert Einstein. 
Einstein first predicted black holes in 1916 with his general theory of relativity. The term black hole was actually coined much later in 1967 by the American astronomer John Wheeler and the first one was discovered not long after in 1971 
particularly on these guys, but even even these ones, as the the gravitational pull is so extreme that even from one side of this star to the next, there's a differential. more gravitational acceleration on this side, the inside of the star, than there is on the outside of the same star, so that the velocity, the force felt, is actually different depending on which side, the near or the far side of the star you're on. Let's try to give a more three-dimensional view. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stars. There are 21 times the mass of our sun, our star, being herded, gravitationally herded, herded by the black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Einstein developed relativity theory. It took him about 10 years to work out the math using a daunting form of mathematics called tensor calculus. He was only able to approximate the solutions own equations, and the math still perplexes even the best scientific brains. However, the challenge did nothing to deter one of Einstein's contemporary astronomers, a theoretical physicist named Carl Schwarzschild. Schwarzschild was a, or Schwarz, Schwarzschild very um, very continent rich last name was a, a practical individual by nature he pioneered new methods for studying spectra for example
gravitational equations, the dynamics between these forces here are going to get very interesting. But what's even more interesting is that these are mere simulations, vast oversimplifications of phenomena that we have actually observed, not necessarily with visible light. Although I believe we've done it with that too, but the... Oh, look at that. The star is getting ripped apart by both black holes. It's getting much closer too. Oh, 
published his work, titled On the Field of Gravity of a Point of Mass in the Theory of Einstein, which became one of the pillars. Look at that. I love watching it get bent. That's such a brilliant simulation. Look at that one star becomes two.
hope you and Scrappy enjoy it. So, what, what did Einstein do with his concept of Let's be 
because they're following the curved space-time deformation. It's due to the speed at which they're traveling. So, perhaps that's why the star is failing to get absorbed by this black hole, Sage, which is over 4.3 million times the mass of our star.
with zero volume, but all of its mass as a singularity. We have two of them over here.
So I think we just entered the monolith at the end of 2001 Space Odyssey. Pretty sure that's just, that's what just happened.
unsubscribe tell me why I suck <laughs> but uh, if that's not the case then interact and uh, come visit me on my IG and my Twitter and let me know what you guys think of the channel and throw out some suggestions I love listening to it I have a backlog of quite a few ones I already have to um, I have planned that I intend to do soon but your suggestions always help me like I say always steer my channel in the right direction and um, your kind words are always welcome I enjoy and look forward to interacting with all you guys, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. I hope you guys sleep very well tonight. And before I let you go, I just want to give a personal thank you to Steve and Tim. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate you. You're, you're just really encouraging. And it means a lot. You motivate me to keep going. And, uh, yeah, I just want to give you a really warm thank you. Because that was so kind of you guys to support the channel the way you did. And, of course, Art Yaka. You and Old Scrap. You guys are always they have a pleasure to chat with. I look forward to hearing what you think about this episode. And Jody, I want to thank you too. I really... Oh, I was so, so happy to hear from you the other day. And you supported the channel and um, you suggested for me to tap back into the comic books, which I'm really glad you did, because I actually just found a whole slew of old comic books. I guess that sounds like a lot more than it is. It's really only about 20, maybe less. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, you absolutely have that one coming right around the corner. for everybody else. Sandy. Potato Lounge. Donna. You're awesome. I always look forward to your comments. Antoine. Sean. Andy. Josh. Alexander. Thank you guys so, so much. Your support means everything to me right now because... Well, this channel is kind of on limbo right now. It's uh, potentially going going on a hiatus. I have a job shift coming up, and I don't know if I'm going to have the time to keep creating videos. So, um, yeah, your support, Cruz, really means a lot to me, and uh, I just didn't want it to go unnoticed and unthanked and unappreciated. So... What you did, what you've given already is more than enough, and uh, each and every one of you, just, it means so much that you guys would throw anything towards the channel, so, it's, uh, it's just a pleasure, it makes me happy, so, I wish you guys a fond farewell, a sweet good night, and a solid sleep, hope you wake up refreshed, feeling good and limber, ready to tackle the day. Until next episode, sleep well, and do your best. <laughs>